it's called good days. Don't worry about it. Just give the information to your doctor and have your doctor submit it to the pharmacy. It's going to be okay. Hepatitis C is kind of treacherous because it's a silent disease. And you don't really know you have it until you're tested for it. My name is Marvis Sugar. I was born in White Plains, New York, and went to New Jersey with my family until I got out of high school. And uh, I gypsied around. <laughs> I was a stage manager for about 10 years. I did some modeling. I was a beautician. I was a window trimmer. I had a child, so it was like, do you buy books or a snowsuit? Many times a snowsuit won. So I was uh, 44 by the time I got to full-time, straight, no interruptions school. And I went on to get my master's degree. My last vocation was in social work. I wanted to kind of give back, and uh, I worked in the welfare department in uh, New Jersey, in Newark. Then I came here in the Poconos and retired. <laughs> The first time I found out that I had hepatitis C, I didn't know what it was, I didn't know what it meant, and I didn't know what it affected. My doctor said, stop drinking beer. <laughs> I didn't drink beer, I drank wine, so he said, stop drinking wine. The medication was brutal. What it was, it was different things put together, and I started that medication. It was brutal. It was brutal. There were times when she was so sick and weak she couldn't get out of bed. And I could hardly hear her voice on the phone. I realized that you were very sick toward, you know, before it was all over. Remember I was pulling up to a red light? Yeah. And I fell asleep before I got the brake on all the way. Right. And I bumped the other car. That's oh. what woke me up. Yeah, that was scary. That was frightening. That was oh. really frightening. There was a lot of stuff you had to do. You had to take pills and shots and time everything. It was it was just, it made me sick and assaulted my body and traumatized my body, and I'm still not cured. The final day at the office, they said, well, we're sorry we couldn't work our magic on you. It didn't work for her. another medication is coming out, Marvis, they say to me. She said, I've heard there's a new medication out. I said, oh, I was all excited, you know. I was excited about this medication because, number one, it was no shots, it didn't make you sick, the side effects were minimal, and... But then reality set in. Uh, the cost was over everybody's head. My insurance company said I was not sick enough to take the medication. And that was because the medication cost so much. I think it was like $1,300 a pill. One pill, $1,300. And it was like, oh, how is this going to happen? You know, the copay was $3,000 a month. So, you know, you're starting to lose hope, and it's like, no, we're going to find a way to do this. I was in a situation where I could change my insurance company, and they approved it. And my doctor is telling me that there was a foundation that had set up a fund to help people and supplement my insurance so I could take the medication. So I took the medication for 12 weeks, and my test came back clean, and here I am. When I found out about good days, I just felt so grateful, really grateful. The support outweighs all of that because the support is giving that person the morale to go on and keep fighting, keep fighting. Just a couple of words makes a major difference. 
I think about good days and I get full because there's no way I could have afforded it. Good days was literally a lifesaver. Literally a lifesaver. Good days was my guardian angel. I don't water enough. We should water more, right? I have energy now. I'm motivated to do things now, and I feel my creativity returning, and I'm beginning to feel like me, the old me again. And you forget what you really feel like, but I'm starting to feel like me again. <laughs>